This is the Cyway Boney SV555, a variable aperture prime focus telescope slash lens designed for wide field astrophotography. You guys have been asking for a review of a Cyway Boney telescope for a couple of years now, and today's the day. And yes, that is how you say it, Cyway Boney. The SV555 is an interesting option in a sea of other wide field telescopes hovering around that 250 millimeter mark. The team at Cyway Boney sent this back in mid-December and have been patiently waiting for me to use and share my results with it. In this video, I'll share my experiences using the SV555 here in the backyard and what you can expect to achieve with a scope like this. As always, I was not compensated in any way for this review, nor do they have any say in what I say in this video. Let's get into it. Cyway Boney in the astrophotography community is known as the budget brand or the Amazon brand. They make affordable telescopes and accessories compared to some of the higher end brands out there. Over the years, I've heard many positive things about their products, and many of you have asked that I review a Cyway Boney telescope on this channel. While this is one of their more exciting options, there is a lot of overlap in this category. The wide field apochromatic refractor category is very crowded, and it's up to you to decide which model is best for your hard earned dollar. The SV555 is a bit different than a regular astrophotography telescope. It's actually closer to a lens. It has a manual variable aperture, meaning you can change the f-stop down from wide open at 4.5 all the way down to f22. For light gathering purposes, you're going to want to keep it at f4.5 99% of the time. I shot all of my test images at f4.5 because this is the most desirable setting for astrophotography and where most people will be using it. It also has a manual focus ring like a lens. Some people don't like this, but since using it for the first time on a telescope with that original Red Cat 51, I've never minded it. For those looking to install an autofocuser, that's an option as well. I do have an extra EAF available, but that's going on another system shortly. Let's talk about the package and presentation. Your Amazon order has arrived and you're just opening the box. The SV555 comes in a nice Cyway Boney branded box and includes a soft carry case for the scope. It also included a nice dovetail mount, matching red rings and a riser for the optical tube. This mounting kit is really nice and you don't get this with something like a Rokinon 135 lens. It also comes with a handy guide scope mount, which I'm happy to see in there. Lastly, it included an EAF mounting kit for an autofocuser, and I'm pretty sure they assumed that I would be installing one right away. What is it with you autofocuser people? I'm a batting off man. You know that. Up to this point, I've had two clear nights to test the SV555 since mid-December. I captured two different targets with a healthy amount of integration for a smooth result. While the images look great overall, there is definitely something going on with this particular unit. I think some people assume that the products that go out for the influencer reviews are cherry-picked, but I can tell you in my experience, this is not the case. Here's what I'm talking about. All right, here's a look at the images I captured on the SV555. This one is the California Nebula, as you can see, with about three hours of total exposure time. Now, as a whole, there's, you know, this is just an auto stretch applied here, no gradient removal or anything, but it's important to see the image at this state before anything has been done to it so you can, you know, assess the star quality. So overall, it looks really good, right? As you get in closer, you can see on this star particularly, there's a bit of a like a flaring kind of shape on there. So that stood out to me. And then also it kind of looks like all these stars have little hats on them uh, for lack of a better description. So something is strange there. And this isn't just from, you know, it's not a stacking error or tracking error. These are on every sub. Um, you can, it's easier to see it on this stack of three hours, but this is kind of what I'm looking at. So again, if you weren't pixel peeping, uh, it might look totally fine to you, but when we get in closer, you can see something is going on with the star shape. And with, you know, telescopes and optics that are that fast, F4.5, they can be really finicky to get it just right. So even the slightest little obstruction internally or something can cause something like that. So something's a little off. 
Here's the second project I worked on. Again, this is just an auto stretch of the stack data. And you can see it on these stars as well. It's, a, you know, it's created that shape again. So it wasn't kind of a one-off scenario. Uh, these are dual narrowband filters. So usually they have a way of tightening up stars in general. Um, but you can kind of see that shape on every star, even the medium sized ones and not the brightest ones. So something going on there um, that, you know, there's ways to correct it using blur exterminator or star minimizing, uh, but it's definitely noteworthy. And I wanted to share that with you. So because I heard such great things about the SV555 from Quib's review, I called him up to look at my images to see what he had to say. My sample of the SV555 was markedly better than my sample of the Red Cat 51. I think it's version 1.5 or whatever. They, they have had so many versions of that scope. Like I've seen though that on cloudy nights and even one of my Patreon supporters has reported getting like blue halos around their stars. So I'm wondering actually right now whether there is equipment lottery going on with that, uh, that particular SV555 lens, which I don't know. So I, I would be really interested to hear about your sample. Okay, so I've had two clear nights to test in three weeks. And uh, so I shot two targets and we can really get a good example star here in the California oh, wow. Nebula. Now, it, what does that look like to you? Because people were telling me it's pinched optics. It's either pinched optics or something that's intruding in the light path. Is the diaphragm completely open? Yes. Okay. Because that could be also something like even if it's on the fully open position, it could actually intrude on the um, on the light path if it's like poorly built, right? And then another example, I, I suppose it's less severe, although uh, it's still kind of there, that shape in yeah. uh, a more recent example. Yeah, I mean, this, yeah, there there's something optical going on uh, they, they're both narrowband right yes they're uh dual dual narrowband filters yeah yeah dual narrowband so it, it might be even better at some point to try out on like just luminance filter right just to to see really with the whole result but especially on the california nebula mm -hmm. the um you can see every single star has this little uh, hat or, yes. or haircut it's uh I thought it's very I've never seen before. Yeah, it looks like a little yeah. uh, troll doll hair to it. Yeah, exactly. And and it's definitely not guiding, right? It's not guiding. It's yeah. not the mouth. It's. Uh, I, I assume you all you've also looked at uh, individual subs. Yes. Yeah. I even have the blink here. Um, it's a little bit harder to yeah. see, but. Uh, yeah, but if it's there. Yeah, it's definitely there. In, in it's just the the hats are in every single sub. Yeah. And the uh, that shape as well. And so yeah. even if it was just the brightest stars, and I would expect it to get worse if, without a filter or with a broadband filter, um, but I, I do kind of see that star shape almost in all the stars, even the medium, they're kind yep. of spiky. Um, yeah. So of course I can correct it and minimize them and blur exterminator and all that stuff. But so you you feel that it's it's significant. Then. Yeah, that, that's that's not a good uh, star shape, I and mean, it's not acceptable for for a scope um, that is for astrophotography. And can you show me the stars in the corner? That's APS-C, right? This is APS-C. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, so that's that's a corner. Give me a sec. Oh, sorry. So it's very interesting because the um, the stars in the corner are exactly the same shape basically as the stars in the center, which means that, as I've seen in my own tests of that lens, uh, the, uh, the star shapes are very consistent throughout the field of view, at least up to APS-C for your sample and for my sample up to full frame. So the optics are good. And my feeling is that maybe within the lens somewhere, there's a tiny screw somewhere that is putting pressure on one of the optical elements that is creating that, or maybe the diaphragm is not well assembled and there's a, a tiny fiber of it that intrudes in the light path. Uh, there is something going on. The, the fact that the stars, if you were to remove that little like horn on top of them, are good both in the center and at the edge, means that the optics themselves are probably okay. And there's something going on there. And I really appreciate the call, Trevor, as well. And one thing I will say as well, that as reviewers is very hard for us, is that 
we're known by the manufacturers, right? The manufacturers, they know our address, they, they know stuff about us, and uh, it's impossible for us to know what is the normal return experience for a standard user, right? And so I've been happy to see that at least for this lens on Cloudy Nights, SV Boni, while they've been a slightly slow to return and, and or refund the lenses, they have done so. So SV Boni is taking the right approach there. It's just I, I wish they had just more consistency in the lenses in the, in the first place. And I really hope that they, they figure it out. I experimented with the aperture ring to see if I could kind of change it slightly. Unlike the Rokinon 135 that clicks into each stop, it's just a smooth aperture where you can be, you know, sitting in between 5.6 and 4.5. So I thought it might be that I wasn't exactly lined up with f4.5 or I'm a little past it. I kind of tried everywhere in between and nothing changed. So really wide open, like you can actually see it wide open there should be round stars. I don't know where that shape is coming from. So at least from the testing I've done, there's something you know, that I can't fix personally. The price, the design, and the overall package of the Saiway Boney SV555 is impressive. I really want to like this scope and I want it to do well. I love that the brand is the most affordable option when you compare it to many others and that it's an easy Amazon order. I know that's a convenient option for a lot of people. Clearly others have used this scope and achieved incredible results with perfect stars that can go head to head with some of the more premium options out there. Once again, I think it comes down to quality control that each unit from the factory is tested and calibrated and aligned to perform at its best when it arrives at your door. It seems like my unit has something going on. I'll try to tweak it and test it. If there's anything I can possibly do on my end to fix it, that would be best case scenario. Overall, I think that the SV555 is a positive step in the right direction for Cyway Boney. And I hope that my experience helps you make an informed decision moving forward. If anything changes with this situation, I'll keep you up to date. And until next time, clear skies.